Hey guys, this is Steven here with another video on how to play some of my favorite puzzles. This one is on Amasu. Reminds me a lot of Slither Links, so if you enjoy those, I think you're going to enjoy this one as well. The rules state that you must draw a single, non-intersecting loop around the grid that passes through every circle. Every time the loop passes through a white circle, it has to go straight through the circle and turn immediately after. Or it can turn immediately before, but it, again, it has to go through the circle and then turn. When it comes through a black circle, it has to turn immediately on the black circle. And it has to go straight for two cells going into the black circle and turn for two cells going out of the black circle. So hopefully that makes sense. If you're still a little confused, that's okay. I was too when I first read the rules. But I'm going to go ahead and try to solve this for you guys so you can see how it unravels and share some common tips and tricks that have helped me and hopefully will help you solve these as well. So the first thing that I do, like in many puzzles, is I start around the edges. And if you look at the white circles along the edges, you always have to draw lines perpendicular, I'm sorry, parallel to the edge. And the reason for that is you can't go perpendicular because you'd run through the edge and you can't turn, obviously, on a white circle. So every white circle that's along an edge, you can essentially just draw a line through it running parallel to the edge. So just like that. Now remember, every white circle has to have a turn either immediately after the circle or before the circle. So if you look at the corners, this is easy. There's only one direction this line can go. It can't go straight, uh, it can't go up, so it's got to come down. Same with here, uh, same in this corner, this has to turn. And so now it gets a little tougher because we're no longer in the corners. But if you think about this white circle, it's gone through it and it's gone straight for more than a cell. And so this side has to turn. Obviously, it can't turn up, so it's got to turn down. And same with this white circle, you've gone straight through it uh, and it's too straight on this end. So it's going to have to bend on this side. Now, this can't go straight into that line. It'd run into it. Uh, itself and it has to be a continuous loop with no intersections uh, so that's going to take a turn there now we don't know what to do with this end because this end can do whatever it wants this uh, has already solved the the rule so this one can either go uh, bending this way or it can go straight so we leave that one alone so that's it for all the white circles along the edges let's move on to the black circles along the edges so every time with a black circle you have to go perpendicular to the edge. And the reason for that is you clearly can't turn down. And uh, because you're going to be coming in from the left or the right, you have to turn up. So like that. And because this has to go straight through two cells, it can't turn right here. There's just not enough room. And you know it can't bend like that. So this will then go towards the right. And a, a completed black circle will have a right angle like this uh, with the two straight edges. And so here's another one uh, along an edge. We can go perpendicular. You can't turn to the right because you run into itself. So you turn uh, to the left. Now with black circles, uh, you can look at the ones that are one cell away from an edge as well because you can't go, there's not enough room to go down. So Again, you're going to run perpendicular to the edge there uh, and perpendicular to that edge. Uh, this black circle, there's not enough uh, information for us to solve yet because it can clearly go in all directions. So that is it for the black circles. Uh, let's look at, oh, as I mentioned earlier, if, if, if you can't come from one direction, on the black circle, it has to go in the opposite direction. Uh, and that's just kind of a, a corollary of the, the perpendicular rule I was talking about earlier. Anyways, I think I'm, I'm confusing myself. So when you see two white circles uh, next to each other, like these two, or these two, or these two, the lines that go uh, through the white circles either have to run parallel to one another, like that, or it has to run through the two like this. Now clearly that's not going to work for this one because we'd run into this other line. 
So because they don't run through it, we know that it's going to run parallel. Now this one, it's the opposite. We can't have parallel lines because it breaks this rule here. And so because it's not parallel, we know that it's going to have to go through it like that. Um, now we don't have enough information yet to, to figure out these two because it would work in either way. So we'll come back to this corner a little bit later. But my next tip is anytime you see three or more white circles next to each other, um, the lines have to run parallel to one another. They can't go through it, right? If you imagine a line going through all of these, you break the rule on these middle circles, right? Because it's gone straight for two cells after this circle and before that circle. And so again, three or more white cells, you're gonna have to have them run parallel with the lines going through it. And here, because there's two in a row uh, and it's already gone through one, it's gotta go through the other. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. My next tip is you can't have a loop uh, close in on itself early or prematurely. So you can't have a looped uh, or squared off area. So what I mean by that is this can't turn in like that. You can see how it's a closed loop within the, the bigger loop. Um, you can't have mini squares or mini rectangles like that. It just doesn't work. You know, here's another example over here. Let's say uh, it went like that. That would be illegal. That's not going to work. So how that's helpful is we know that this area has to take a turn left or right because, right, this is a straight line going through it below. So immediately after, it's got to turn left or turn right. Well, we know it can't turn left because it traps this end of the loop. This, this loop can't escape without it closing in on itself. So therefore, it has to turn right. So you can see how that's uh, a little helpful. Uh, and then my last tip, which I don't think I would have a good example for you guys quite yet. Maybe it'll come up later. But if you have a closed off area, you can't have an, uh, an odd number of loop ends uh, because at the end, it's going to have to be an even number that closes in on itself. So anyways, uh, that's it for the tips. Let's keep going. Let's try to finish this off and see what we can do. So this black cell I can see can't turn up because that would be too short of a uh, path. So it's because it can't go up, it's got to come down. We run into the same problem here. Can't turn left because we run into its buddy over there, so it's got to go right. Because we've connected to this white circle, we can't turn. We have to go through it. And because this end's straight, this end has to turn. Uh, and we, we don't know quite yet if it's up or down. I, I'll come back to that. Let's look at this. We can't turn left. That's too short of an area. So we, we're going to have to turn right. Um, and we can't come down here because it's going to trap this loop end. Where does this go? Can't go straight. Can't go left. If it goes right, it's a dead end. Right? So we're going to have to go up. Can't close here. So because this can't go straight, it's got to go up. Because if it goes down, it's a dead end. This has nowhere to go but to continue going straight. And now we look at these two, and we know that they can't run parallel to each other. right? If it was parallel to one another, this would have a dead end. Uh, this would have nowhere to go. And this is way too straight of a line going through the white circles. So because these are not parallel, we know it's running through. This place has, or this end only has one area to go. Uh, and now we're starting to see a little bit of a loop form here, right? We can kind of imagine this happening. This can't go straight, can't go right, it's got to come left. And this end has to turn, right? We imagine this white circle has had a straight line through it going up. So when it comes down, it's going to have to turn. Can't go right, got to go left. Um, excuse me. This can't turn right because, again, that's a dead end. Can't go straight, so it's got to turn. Um, let's kind of bounce it around here. So this can't come down. 
right? So it's only got one way to go. Now this is interesting. So let's look at this. If I were to turn here and connect these, where this area is going to be a problem because I can't come down and I can't come up because I've just closed off the loop. So I have to go straight, but then that's trapped in this loop end, right? Now this has nowhere to go. It's going to run into itself again. So we know that this does not close off here. So because this thing can't go up, can't go down, it's got to go straight. And this now is, uh, only has one path to go, which is forward and down like that. And now we look at this white, this white circle. Uh, this is a straight line. And so this area immediately after is going to have to turn. That does that. This can't go straight. That's a dead end. It'll run into itself. Can't go left, so it's got to come right. Um, let's think about this. This can't close off here because if it close off, that traps this area or this loop end, whatever you want to call it. So and it can't go straight, so it's got to come like that. This has to come down and close. This can't go straight. That'd be a closed loop. So it's got to come down. And we're getting close to the end here. Let's think about this. This can't go straight. That's a dead end. So it's got to come up. This has to keep coming out. Um, all right, so this is this is a good example of the uh, odd number. If I close this area off, uh, this is uh, w what's going to happen. If I close that here, you're going to have two loops, two areas. That's no good. The other problem is if I close that area off, um, we have we have this one, two, three loop ends that, that there's no way to connect these all it just it's just not going to work so we know that this doesn't close off there therefore it's going to look like that and we are done let me hit the done button make sure we are correct and we are you can see if you follow my mouse this is just one big enclosed area um, that's followed all the rules. All the circles have a line going through it or around it. And hopefully that makes sense. I enjoy these a lot, but I did, uh, it did take me a little bit to get used to uh, the rules. Cause again, it's a little bit different than what I'm used to or what a lot of people are used to with just typical Sudokus, but give it a shot. I think you'll like it. It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah. I, I think it's a, a good challenge. So anyways, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more like this in the future. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.